Verse 54, he said again, how then could the scriptures be fulfilled that it must happen thus? Jesus must suffer and be crucified for the sins of the world to fulfill scripture. It must happen this way, according to the scriptures. You know, as, as we read during communion today, Isaiah 53, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. This has to happen. It has to go down like this. He must suffer to atone for our sins. To reconcile us to God. First Peter chapter one says that his crucifixion was foreordained before the foundation of the world. In Revelation 13, Jesus is described as the Lamb of God who was slain from the creation of the world. The cross was always God's plan of redemption for mankind. It wasn't some unforeseen tragedy that happened. It was always the plan. And it was predicted throughout the Old Testament scriptures. And so Jesus says here again in verse 54, this must happen this way to fulfill the scriptures. And in that hour, verse 55, in that hour, Jesus said to the multitude. So now he turns to all those soldiers, all those temple guard, all the religious leaders. And he says to them, have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to take me? I sat daily with you teaching in the temple and you did not seize me. If you remember back in chapters 21 to 23, Jesus, which was just earlier in the same week, Jesus taught in the temple courts and the religious leaders questioned him repeatedly, trying to trap him in his words, trying to trip him up in his doctrine but it says they ended up marveling at his teachings. But now they've come in the middle of the night to arrest him, which is illegal. And they have almost a thousand soldiers with them, with swords and clubs and weapons. If Jesus is such a threat and dangerous, why didn't they seize him in the temple when he was teaching openly? Now they come at night. Jesus is is calling them out for what they're doing here and how they're doing it. Verse 56, but all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. And then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Look back at verse 31. Then Jesus said to the disciples, all of you will be made to stumble because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered so they arrest Jesus they take him into custody and I mentioned that there there are three parts or three phases to his religious trial John's gospel tells us Jesus was first brought to Annas the former high priest Matthew doesn't record that for us but John does he was first brought to Annas the former high priest and that was the first phase of his religious trial before Annas. Now, just to give you a little background on Annas, Annas served as high priest from 6 A.D. to 14 A.D. before he was removed from office by the Roman governor at that time. But Annas still retained control over the priesthood and over the temple. Annas was the real power and Judaism. Five of his sons served as high priest and his son-in-law Caiaphas served as high priest and one of his grandsons served as high priest. Annas was the control behind everything. He controlled everything that went on in the temple. He controlled the market that was in the temple where people came and, and bought animals for sacrifice or exchanged money with the money changers. Uh, Annas is the one who set all of that up. He's the one who controlled all of that. Annas is the one who made the temple a den of thieves. Uh, Jesus, remember, cleansed the temple not once but twice. 
And so Annas has a personal grudge against Jesus. And the religious leaders, when Jesus is arrested, the religious leaders recognize Annas as the, the real power, the real authority over Judaism. That's why they take Jesus to Annas first. And then Annas sends Jesus to Caiaphas, who is the acting high priest or the official high priest. And the trial before Caiaphas, that's the second phase of his religious trial. And that's where Matthew picks it up in verse 57. Verse 57, and those who had laid hold of Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. So they go to the house of Caiaphas. Again, it's illegal to have a trial at night and in secret at the home of Caiaphas. But they're gathered there. But Peter followed him at a distance to the high priest's courtyard and he went in and sat with the servants to see the end. So Peter began to follow Jesus from a distance or distance himself from Jesus and to sit with the enemies of Jesus. This will lead to him denying Jesus. If you begin to distance yourself from Jesus and hang out with unbelievers, it won't be long before you find yourself denying Jesus with the things that you say. We need to stay close to Jesus.